Yeah, I mean, we don't need to vote on utilities, I don't think. No, I was just putting it in there and maybe it's just a heads up. Everyone can take a look at it. I did kind of mostly finish today. I was just going through adding in where the goals. So that was the only piece with that. Uh, for the In the strategies, I did the links back to what goals they support because it's actually a unique chapter in that it's got like 20 goals you've got like four aspirations and 20 goals and then you only end up with like 15 strategies so there's fewer strategies to support a lot of goals because there's so many different utilities and so many different facilities and so many different services that as you start putting things together or the utilities and the facilities that it ends up with a lot of goals but very few strategies so i guess that makes sense when you start thinking about it yeah. it should be interesting it's a really important part of the city that people don't think about very much so, so it is well, there for people um, to review the chapter is not written i'll start working on trying to um well, actually probably i'm going to keep working on doing the implementation strategy for the community services um because i have a lot of drafts that are out and i'm going to start prodding a few people to get to get those back so we can get those kind of compiled into a document so we've got that so okay well i'll just go ahead and call the meeting to order you know we won't have a quorum at first but um if aaron pops in we will so uh yeah i'm going to call to order the monday september 26th meeting of the Montpelier planning commission um Right now, we're not going to be able to approve our agenda because we only have three out of seven seats um, available here. Uh, currently, we are down to planning commissioners, so it's it's on it's on five of us to make sure that we have a, a quorum of four um, every meeting. So it's no surprise that uh, that you know we don't necessarily aren't necessarily going to have a quorum always uh, until we get those seats filled. Um, so for now, we are not having an official meeting. This is more of a working meeting of the Planning Commission, where we'll just follow uh, what would have been our agenda and and discuss it. But there will be no voting and no no major decisions made for this meeting. Um, so with that, uh, we uh, have. Um, Gabe and I uh, have to remember to show up Wednesday for the reappointments. Um, I'm assuming I'm assuming you're planning to seek the reappointment, Gabe. Just to clarify. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize I needed to be somewhere on Wednesday. What is that? At the city council meeting, I've got other appointments already set up. Um, yeah, it's the most important thing is for you to put the application in. Um, okay. On the city's website. Uh, which is, you know, the same thing that you would have done, the, you know, not too long ago when you okay. applied. Um, and then if you're not that. there, if, if you're not there, Mike and I can vouch for you. Um, but yeah, they can't, if they don't have an application, they can't vote to reappoint you. All right, I'll, I'll make sure I get that on. Well, I'm glad I said that. Uh, I don't know if I have any other updates other than to say that um, we can maybe spend a few minutes later, but I just scribbled down some things for the beginnings of an arts and culture chapter. I tried to hit the high notes, but there's definitely, you know, gaps to be filled in from from where it is right now. Um, I don't have anything else. Does anybody else have any other updates? Um, this, for stuff that's not on the agenda, you know, um, I do, I think I mentioned last time, I, I have a new intern, or maybe I didn't, um, but I do have a new intern. His name is Jake Peel. He uh, works, he's uh, grew up in Williamstown, it's going to UVM, and uh, is interested in municipal planning. So he's going to be interning this fall, and he is going to help out with the public safety chapter. So um, it's good. As one of our chapters we have left, and he's going to help to work on that. And that chapter really has 
a number of sub sections that have to kind of get worked through. I mean, obviously you can know police, fire, EMS, uh, the dispatch. Um, those are the ones most people can think of, but there's also kind of emergency management, emergency planning, uh, your hazard mitigation plans and those types of things. Uh, and we have the work of the Justice Center. Um, the Justice Center has some community services and they also have some public safety because because they do the um, restorative justice and um, reintegration programs. So they work very closely with the, the, um, the county uh, district attorney, as well as the police officers to go through and decide who's going to go through a restorative process and who's going to, um, and when somebody comes out of prison, then we need to go and do some re reintegration um, programs. And so we've got a number of those types of programs. Now, community justice also does some community services, so they'll have some pieces in community services, but so there, that was six, and I think there was a seventh that um, is a part of the public safety. Um, oh, building inspection. So the building inspector is um, really most of that work is um, building inspector and health officer. Really, both of those functions come back to public safety. Um, we have them to ensure building safety, fire safety, um, and those types of pieces. So those are the really seven sub chapters that'll go into that. And so uh, Jake will be working on that um, with me throughout this um this semester so that'll be a big help for me and uh hopefully a good learning experience for him and uh se group has been in touch with me about the plan stuff um and they're pulling together the historic resources and we've been getting them a bunch of pieces that they've been asking for so they can come up with a template draft that they can bring i think they're at the next planning commission meeting in two weeks well it's two weeks in a day because i think in two weeks which I'll remind everybody now. Um, the next meeting is Indigenous Persons slash Columbus Day. Um, so our meeting will be Tuesday, which may be an issue for Ariane because I know that's the RPC night. So I don't know how that'll work out, but we'll keep an eye out. Okay, so Tuesday Hello. the 11th. Yeah. So that's all I have that's not stuff on the agenda here. Okay, thanks, Mike. That's helpful. And if your if your new intern happens to see this, welcome aboard. Uh, well, we don't have any members from the public here, so nothing to discuss there. Um, People, uh, I don't, I don't know what kind of applications have gone in for the our empty seats. But again, I would encourage everyone if you know someone who you think would be great to work with here, and who has related skill set, which there's a lot of those, um, to apply. Um, when, I, sweetie. when I checked last week, Kirby, you were the only one who had applied. I did send out a personal invitation to somebody who sounded like she was very interested in applying. So I think um, that would be hopefully, so we've got, if if Gabe's applying and you're, uh, Gabe's reapplying and you're reapplying, that leaves us two vacant seats. And I would hopefully think we've got one. And I know some other people, I think John had said he had somebody in mind as well. So if everyone else can keep thinking, thinking of another person, that would be great. That's great, thanks, yeah. I probably need to do the same. I need to maybe reach out to people. Okay. Uh, well, let's let's just hop into this uh, utilities and facilities strategies that that Mike's drawn up for us. That's going to be most of what we have to do tonight. So, take it away, Mike. All right. Let me see.
notes is that utilities and facilities. So I did have, and I wanted to just do this real quick because I did put the broader utilities and facilities discussion in, in these two chapters here. I think one was an older draft, one's a newer draft. So there is one of those long written versions. And then I did go in and put it into our format in the template. So making clear aspiration. Um, Mike, your audio's a little garbled for me. Same, same for Ariane, it seems. Still. Still, still garbled. Still garbled. Yeah. Was it better before? Or just now that I'm sharing screen? It just started with the sharing screen, which seems unrelated. So it's pretty weird. Oh, um, do you want to try to share a screen? Make it out. Uh, yeah, well, why don't you, I mean, why don't you unshare the screen and see if that helps? Is it any better? It's a now little better, I'm but now that I'm out of it. It's still, it's still kind of garbled, though. Is there some other device there that's messing with it? I think there should be. By myself in the council chamber, so. The only thing is I'm hooking up to Wi-Fi, so usually that shouldn't be an issue. It's a little better now. All right, well, I can just go real briefly through what was there. I don't think we're going to be approving anything, but this was going to let what's there so they can start looking at it. You guys can start looking at it. So it really is broken into four sections. It's utilities and facilities. But what we look at for utilities are the four municipal utilities, water, sewer, wastewater, and uh, district heat. Those are the four utilities that we have. Uh, that's one chunk. Our public facilities is the second chunk. So that is all of our buildings, our, our garage, our city hall, the recreation facilities, all the, the built pieces that we have. Um, and this goes to a lot of the conditional use review, talks about, you know, not exceeding the capacity of facilities. So, you know, we only have so much facilities. Um, it also then includes um, private utilities. This chapter talks about a few of the private utilities, the, the big one being electricity, but we also have telecommunications, um, which is less important here in Montpelier uh, than it is in other communities. In other communities, it's really important to be talking about telecommunications because they don't have broadband and they don't have cell coverage. In Montpelier, we have multiple options for broadband and multiple options for cell coverage. So it's less of an issue for us, but we still talk about it. And then the last, the fourth piece talks about those um, services that are not municipal that we keep an eye on. The biggest one, of course, being the schools. So usually we try to talk about making sure that our development does not exceed the capacity of facilities. And so that schools, um, the library, medical center, um, and the solid waste management district. So there are a couple of them that are required under statute that we talk about. So those are four of the big ones. Um, none of them, we don't expect any of them to be an, a, a, an issue. So most of this is pretty brief. 
but they're all kind of required to be in there. So we have these four big categories of aspirations. In order to cover those four on the next tab, you've got the 20 different goals. And most of that's just broken down. The utilities are broken into making sure we've got, you know, quality and quantity of water. Um, so you've got the what's the service that's being provided, the water, the sewer. Um, and then we talk about the second goal is talking about the infrastructure in the, the buildings. So, you know, we want to have clean water. We also want to have um, pipes that are maintained uh, and a treatment plant that meets standards, those types of things. And then the third goal of that is the goal that kind of catches the finance, financial part of it. It's got to be affordable. And it also has to raise enough money that we can maintain the system. So there's kind of these three different things. And that applies for water, sewer, district heat, and wastewater. So you kind of have four different, you know, so that takes up 12 goals because each one has those three. Um, and then again, we've got a set of goals for those facilities and other services. And then finally, um, I don't have the exact count, but I think it's like 15, 16 strategies most of the strategies so we actually have fewer strategies than we have goals so most of those are things like um, having utility plans having um, uh, the capital improvement plan which we've talked about in the past uh, how we how we fix and repair things and a lot of the utilities are part of the capital improvement plan so uh, getting a regular plan for replacing water lines sewer lines um separating combined sewers the cso's and then there are a number of other things that are also after that that we can that we have mentioned in the past about infrastructure um economic infrastructure programs and so most of those kind of are are pretty straightforward um they're all in there so people can kind of take a look through and see see what they um see if there's any questions in it, but that'll be something for people to review and we can approve at a future meeting. Um, but I'm not gonna go through it all in detail. Most of it's pretty straightforward. So I, I had a, a couple questions. I mean, I didn't, I didn't see really there being anywhere, you know, that needed a lot of modifications. It was pretty straightforward, but I, I do, uh, so we've got in our housing goal, we've got, you know, a goal of I think 30 units per year. I, I can't remember where we came out on that, but. We have this desire to increase housing. And my question, just looking at the utilities, is you know, it all is really talking about maintenance. Um, do we have sufficient infrastructure to support the housing goal that we set up? And if not, do we need to put some language in there just to acknowledge that there will need to be some additional investment? Because one of the things you're always going to get pushback on from the community is, oh, we don't have enough resources. We don't have enough infrastructure to do this. And I don't know if we do or don't, if we have a lot of excess capacity, maybe it's totally fine, but that was one question I had. Yeah, big big picture, we have enough capacity. Our sewer plants and our water plants are both operating give or take 50% capacity. So you could double the size of Montpelier without exceeding the water and the sewer plant. Um, it's we, we have plenty of capacity where this starts to fall apart a little bit is in the um, in the either the size or the age of the distribution lines and those types of things those are those are the issues and that's a little bit where the programs come up um, where we try to use these programs to try to improve that's what TIF could be used for if it's in a TIF district um, but we also tried to just have an infrastructure program where we could kind of do these mini TIFs. And we did that for Caledonia Spirits, where um, Caledonia Spirits couldn't be built without moving and replacing the, the sewer main that crosses the river. It actually comes down Berlin and then crosses the river there and then comes up, goes under the railroad tracks and goes down Berry Street. And it, it was an old line. It was located in a bad spot. So we moved it and, and replaced it for you know, a number of, for, for a decent distance. Part of that was paid for by basically borrowing money and then having the, the revenues from the new distillery 
basically pay back the bond. Um, so there'll be things like that, but it's but we don't need to say anything different. Yeah, the, the program is described in there, and it's just okay. going to be used in, in different places. I think um, if we identify things in plans that come up and say this, there there is a you know uh, development potential in an area that can't be recognized because there isn't enough sewer or water. Um, like anything that's in the rural district, um, parts of Elks Club property. It's in the rural mm -hmm. district because it doesn't have access to sewer and water. Well, we could change that. Um, Habitat for Humanity can't be built up on Northfield Street without sewer and water. Mm -hmm. So utilities extending sewer and water into places that don't have it. Um, we've got some programs to do it, but you know it may come out in, in our plans that um, we we need to either come up with more money or come up with more plans or come up with more policies. Um, but you need we don't to say something like like expand where appropriate, or you just think that the discussion of TIF and mini TIF above is that that's sufficient? I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. If, there's some things that again, like we've talked about in some of these other chapters, there's some things that are really um, fit well into a discussion of the implementation strategy. Then there's some things that are really um, focused well in a chapter discussion. And this may be one where we talk about, when we talk about um, that section where it's like how, how this chapter relates to other chapters. Um, most of our, all of our chapters have that section where we talk about, you know, how does historic and housing, you know, or historic and economic development either support each other or conflict with each other. And I think this is a, that would be a good place for us to have that conversation of, um, you know, with, with such a, a big goal and a critical goal of increased housing, you know, the reason we have high density housing, there's one reason we have high density housing. That's because we have a sewer district. We have mm -hmm. sewer as an option. That's why, you know, um, there aren't a lot of communities in the state that have sewer plants. Um, and that's why they don't have high density housing. Right. Um, the reason we can do high density housing because we have that and where we can, you know, where we can run sewer lines and where we can extend sewer lines is directly connected to um, where we can also have high density housing. So. Um, I think no, that, that, that sounds fair. Just was it was just a question. I think having that in chapter heading or something like that is, and we don't yeah. even know. You don't have to promise the world. It's just the idea that we might need to do some expansion. The other thing is probably just to redirect, redirect to me. So when I when I think of infrastructure, I don't know why it was. I mean, I'm look, look, reading about the buildings and these other things. And I'm just thinking, you know, the biggest infrastructure thing that I see is roads. And where is that word? If you guys already talked about that in another chapter, I mean that's that's the biggest problem. I feel I feel like we've got infrastructure wise, but I it's probably not in this chapter, right? Yes, but there's a whole special chapter on transportation. Okay. So we we've got a whole chapter that deals with the roads and the complete streets. So it's roads, bikes, pedestrians. Um, also includes things like public transportation and. Um, and you guys already finished that. That's already I could just go read what you already worked on. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting there. If you nope. got other things to say. No, that was that was all I had to say. If there was anyone who has questions now, we can take them. Otherwise, I think we'll just kind of, kind of tackle it. At, oh. Huh, huh. Oh. <laughs> I guess I'm not moving enough. I didn't even know there was a light sensor. In <laughs> um, I have a couple of things. Uh, Arion, did you have anything? Well, um, sort of related to what Gabe was talking about, I just am looking at this for the first time and I see um, some language about, yeah, like, um, mo uh, what does it say? Continue to maintain a balance between, you know, uh, residential development and the capacity of various um, systems. So I, I just worry about that being, you know, like, you know, Gabe, you were sort of talking about being used by people who oppose housing. I just think we need to word it carefully. It's not that I'm opposed to the idea. I just want to be mindful of that. That's all. 
Nope. And these are all drafts like every other chapter. So as we get to it, um, and as you go through it, if you if there are things you can highlight them and say this, these others were good. This one I think needs some tweaking, and we can certainly go through and um, make edits to reflect what what makes sense. Um, some of this rejiggering at the end kind of was was kind of a little bit quicker, and I may not have fully um, fully captured everything. Uh, Gabe and Ariane, do you do you know uh, what strategy and or goal has the tricky language? We can go ahead and mark it now. I'm just I, I didn't see any. Oh, uh, it for me it was on the goals. It was um, I think all the goals under D continue to maintain a balance between. <laughs> schools and the library and CVMC. And then I guess the last one about participating in the solid waste district. That one seems fine, but it was those and I don't. Yeah, it was 17, 18 and 19 and the goals and I don't off the top of my head have language to suggest, but I can I can think about that or I don't know if others have other thoughts. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe the problem is maintain the balance because it sounds like we're at capacity or something. Um, so if we could change that to something that implies surplus. Um, yeah, because we have no evidence that any of these that development is an issue for any of these so far. So I think I think it is just a matter of semantics, how we word that to go and reflect that that. It's not like we have a balance right now. Um, we actually have capacity to. It is interesting, you know, having sat in some of these hearings now, uh, the the plan is used as a weapon. So we, we do have to be very careful about language that we might think, oh, it's it doesn't it's you know, it doesn't matter. Well, it, it does matter because. Somebody would pull out what Arianne just highlighted, right, and say, well, you know, this clearly is an imbalance. <laughs> We'd hear something just like that, and you'd say, "Okay, well, that is that really what it meant?" We don't define what balance is, right? So, yeah, I I appreciate that, Ryan. It's true. It's unfortunately true. Um, okay, I threw a note in there. We don't have to come up with the answer now, but I wrote change maintain the balance to something that clarifies that we have surplus capacity um okay uh so so mike i was going to ask you about uh so there's stormwater changes um and can you give us some background about why there's you know new new stuff in there relating to stormwater um and you know what montpelier is already planning for the future for that and and what plans we have just just to since that's a new thing i thought it would be worth getting yes, a summary storm water is a little bit different um considering it's a it's not fully its own utility yet so we have a sewer a water and a district heat enterprise funds we don't have a stormwater enterprise fund yet but we are in the process right now of creating a stormwater utility so we can separate out those funds there are a lot of state and federal goals um we aren't kind of getting in the weeds we are not what would what the the wonks would call an ms4 community which is a municipal storm sewer system or something like that so it's got four s's so it's m with four s's so they call it ms4 and uh that's there's a federal water clean water rule that applies to any community with more than ten thousand people which we don't have or otherwise assigned by the state or federal government and so we've always kind of trend, been trying to avoid anyone who's an ms4 has to have a stormwater utility and so we've tried to keep our waters as clean as possible so we can avoid being an impaired watershed and therefore avoid getting tagged with that and having all the federal requirements that go along with it. So we're trying to basically be good so we can avoid 
having to to meet those extra um, because there's a lot of it comes with a lot of costs. So we're trying to basically do everything that an MS4 would without having to actually be an MS4. So that's why there's a, a number of things that we're doing, um, including having rules in our zoning to help regulate. So unlike sewer and water, where we really don't regulate them through the zoning, stormwater we do. Um, and it's going to have some utility requirements and it's going to have some um, other costs, and that's going to go to maintaining the, 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 those pipes under the ground. Right now, your sewer bills pay for a lot of the storm sewer pipes. So they're kind of, you know, it'll all get start to get separated out to help balance out, make sure that your sewer is paying for your sewer pipes because you're not going to have CSOs, combined sewer overflows anymore. So you should have all the storm sewer going through the storm pipes and all the wastewater going through the wastewater pipes. So everything will have its own fund, everything will be taken care of, everything will be regulated. So it's really meant to take our stormwater quality to another level. So there's a lot of new stuff in here. That's why there's a lot in here is because we're kind of at an inflection point. Um, our water plant and our water system is in good shape other than some very old water pipes that keep blowing up on us. Our sewer plant has now been modernized um, and is finishing up. It's going through phase two. We'll have, you know, a state-of-the-art sewer plant um, pretty quick. I mean, it is state-of-the-art, but it'll be, you know, finishing up really being, um, having some new things with it. So that will be really uh, top of the line. And then it's really now coming down to starting to, to make some big investments in our um, storm sewer, uh, in our, yeah, in our storm sewer system. So what can we do to improve this system um, to make sure that everything's getting treated? Um, we have new state requirements that what are called a general roads permit. That's that's something new. That's also stormwater. How well are we regulating the water that flows, you know, off of our roads? So there's a lot of new state requirements and new new federal requirements that we have to meet. And there's a lot of work going, a lot of planning going on at DPW right now to kind of prepare for that, get stuff lined up. And that's why in the plan you'll see a lot more kind of stuff that's in there on storm sewer that you don't see in the other ones. Thanks, Mike. Um, has has the the infrastructure transition started over like away from the CSOs? Uh, for for CS, CSO, uh, reducing the number of combined sewers has been going on for more than a decade, probably a couple of okay. decades. And I think, at, at, you know, we get beat up a lot in the papers, but I think at the start, I mean, I'm, I'm just giving ballpark numbers. I think there may have been 60 combined sewer overflows in the city. And some of them were very easy to kind of break apart and to separate and to take care of things. And, and over the years, they've gotten it down to like six, maybe. So I think they've, they've eliminated most of them. And now there's a number of places where they're just, and the ones that are left are the hardest ones to separate. Um, so there are a number of things to try to reduce the amount of water going into it. So, um, for example, there are a lot of roofs that are still tied into the stu tied into the sewer. And so if it rains hard and you've got a big roof, like a, a state office building might have a combined sewer, half of City Hall does. Um, so it's kind of a Half the, half the building has been disconnected, the other half hasn't. So if it rains hard, all that water goes into the sewer pipes. And if it exceeds the sewer pipe, then it dumps sewage into the river. That's what a CSO is. Um, so by separating the storm water out of it, then it doesn't overflow in a storm. That's the whole point of trying to separate them. But some of these are easy to fix and some of them are very hard to fix. And so that's what they're working on. The big East State Street project that you may, if you're paying attention to DPW newsletters and stuff, that's a big project for next year where they're gonna replace all the, the pipes going up East State Street is gonna be a huge project. Um, 
seven, eight, nine million dollars. It's a pretty big project. That will separate one of our biggest CSOs that we have remaining. It's really, you know, it's kind of it's a challenging, challenging place to separate them if you don't have a, a storm sewer pipe to tie stuff into. So they're gonna, that's part of that big project. So there are a number of these larger projects to help eliminate the CSOs because we know, first of all, we have to as a part of the Clean Water Act, but it's also um, it's it's a hard project. It's a goal that the city has had. It's the goal the public works has had to eliminate all the CSOs. Um, and that will make a big difference in the water. So far, we've gotten it down to, you know, what probably was a an event every single time it rained to, you know, a couple events a year, depending on how hard we get rain. So they've, they've been doing a good job, but um, until they get it all done, we're, we're going to continue to to hear about Every, every time we get a combined sewer overflow, there's going to be com complaints and, you know, not wrongly. Um, it's just, there's only so much you can do um, and you do a project at a time to separate them out. Uh, well, thanks. I, I didn't realize how far along we were in, in addressing that actually. I thought we had farther to go. So that's wonderful. Yeah, no, um, I mean, I think the projects that are left are big projects and they're going to be hard to do. But in total numbers, because they've been working on it for so long, um, they've gotten out, they've done all the easy work. Now they've got the, the most expensive and the hardest ones to do. Uh, the other question I had was, um, there's something relating to monitoring Green Mountain Power um, to make sure it sticks to its net zero, uh, you know, uh, promises. Um, I recall John having an issue or, or maybe it's Aaron with the city being dependent on Green Mountain Power. So I just thought I would just like flag that one because, um, you know, other folks have had issues with us putting something in the plan that's reliant on them. Um, but I don't know. What do you, what do, uh, Ariana and Gabe, what do you think about having this? There's a, there's a strategy number 16, continue to monitor Green Mountain Power to ensure it meets the commitments to be net zero by 2030. How do you feel about that being a strategy? Since it's since it's not something we're doing, well, the part we're doing is what? Like watching. Um, the active part is GMP. Um, do you guys have thoughts about that or? Um... Yeah, I did notice that I wasn't, like I, I wasn't sure about the aspiration in general about private utilities, like how, not sure what a meaningful like strategy for the city of Montpelier is, but obviously they're tremendously important. So yeah, I, I wasn't sure. Um, I was, yeah, that was- yeah, do, we have, do we have some kind of leverage to, and, to enforce or something? Or I mean, they're, they're kind of a monopoly, right? Yeah, they need a certificate of public good. So they, um, so they have plans to be net zero by 2030. And so a lot of what the energy committee is doing is under the assumption that Green Mountain Power is going to meet their, you know, if we're going to be net zero by 2030 or by 2050, then we need all of our electricity to be net zero. Um, and because we're completely in GMP service area, then um, and GMP themselves have said they will be net zero by 2030. So by them meeting their goals by 2030, we're going to meet our 2050 goals for 30% of our um, energy portfolio. Because you've got electricity, you've got home heating, and you've got transportation are your three big sectors. So if GMP is going to be net zero, then we've, you know, we've already checked that box. Um, so a lot of what, you know, it's a, it, there's one strategy that goes along with it, and that's just to watch the certificates of public good. And presumably, if they're going to default on their promise, then, you know, it'll be in the, C, um, the, the certificate of public good process, and it'd be up to the city to decide if they want to pay a lawyer or a lobbyist or uh, just get people involved to go through and file motions with 
this, the uh, Public Service Commission to try to get them to force GMP to keep their promise. Um, as I said, I've, I have no information to, to believe that they're not going to be meeting their commitments. I think our job is just to keep an eye on the CPG things and make sure that um, they will. So, and it's a required, it's one of the required pieces. Some of the pieces that are in the statute that lay out, you have to talk about certain things. One of them is the electricity. So we do talk about it. And really the only thing we do is just monitor them to the extent that, you know, because we don't really have issues. Other communities will have more issues to make sure, for example, uh, three-phase power might be important to have at an industrial park or, you know, uh, we're a farming community and the, you know, the, the dairy barns can operate much more efficiently with three-phase power and we're going to work with X, Y, and Z to try to get this power run out to these barns so that way they're operating more efficiently and more cost effectively. Um, so the utilities can be a much, electric utilities can be a much bigger topic in other communities. For us, we, we've got power, you know, whatever we want, because we've got a lot of power, a lot of substations, lines everywhere. It's not really an issue. So we don't plan a lot for it. A lot of it, you know, very small plans. Same, same thing that we do with uh, you know, the library and the hospital and, you know, in other places, um, you know, uh, it's, it's health care and health services may be a much bigger deal if you happen to live in a town that's 40 miles from the nearest hospital, then, you know, where's your rural, rur rural health care get provided by, um, not an issue again for us. But we're still required to talk about it in our plan. So that's why there's these little things that just pop up, might just pop up once to say, make sure it doesn't become an issue in the future. We don't expect it to become an issue in the future, but we will promise to keep an eye on it. And if it becomes an issue, we'll do something about it, even though we're never going to exceed the capacity of the Central Vermont Medical Center. You know, our population won't grow so much that we exceed the capacity of that hospital to provide service. Um, we're just, this county isn't growing that fast that that would ever be an issue. And same with a number of these, these things that we're required to talk about. Um, so. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to flag that one. So I, I, yeah, I think it was Aaron who had some issues before, but um, don't have any, personally don't have any recommendations for that. Does anybody have anything else on? utilities plan or no um yeah not now but are we gonna so what's the next step is mike gonna rewrite some of it or do we go in and edit or sorry i've forgotten our process a I think, bit. I, I, well it's it's a little weird since we don't have a quorum right now um usually we would take a deeper dive and maybe maybe consider voting it out if we didn't have anything major to change but since since voting's off the table we are going to have to revisit it uh but if but if yeah if you have comments and things i'd say yeah leave, put those in there now like i put in that one note um just so that we can get through it quicker in the future um and get the plan done faster does that sound good to you mike Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, all we have left for tonight is to take a quick peek at the uh, the chapter that I wrote this afternoon. It's it just has one page right now. I can share it. Um, so what I, what I did was I just took, uh, I, you know, I tried, I followed our regular format. I only did the first three major sections. I know we have some others like maps and things, 
um, but just got us started at least. Um, I mean, full disclosure, I put less than an hour into this. <laughs> so um, it's just a, just a draft, but uh, I think it touches on the big things from the chapter and it touches on the big things more importantly, probably from the arts and culture master plan. Um, I took out the substance, which were, which was just uh, the main, the main things that the arts and culture master plan wanted to achieve. I just hit those in the intro. It sounds, I mean, when I read it, it does sound a little repetitive because I feel like there's no, because you talk, I just talk about the aesthetics of the built environment constantly. Um, but it, but in a nutshell, you know, it's, uh, art's important because it makes our built envi environment reflect our values and vision. And uh, the plan helps uh, make art focused, which commentary, I don't know, it's a little bit of an oxymoron because I think isn't art supposed to be free, but whatever. We're, we're focusing the art and directing it <laughs> uh, to uh, capture the energy of the city and our values. Uh, so one of their uh, major goals is to enhance character and attachment to city. I tried not to be too verbose about it. I would just just kind of hit the stuff. Um, so I could, you could probably go on and on about attachment to the city. I just left that pretty short. Um, there was a focus on high quality art, which is why I use that phrase uh, to enhance the aesthetic quality and help our and help our built environments stand out from other places. Um, and under that, they had community vitality and, and involving a broad range of peoples. I feel like that's that's a little bit redundant as I mentioned a couple of times here, but it's just kind of the way that I tried to follow how they organized it. Uh, value artists and artistic processes. We've talked about this before. Um, and there's there are a couple of strategies relating to that. So it has its own part but i think that this because we had talked about how do you connect artists themselves with a plan that's supposed to be about city planning which is not supposed to be about individual people so um to whatever extent it this this connects that by um talking about having a plan that creates opportunities for artists and involves them in projects so that's kind of connecting the the built stuff, the development stuff, with the people. And then uh, there is there was mention of use of resources, which there's part we have strategies related to funding and use of resources. So I threw a little bit in there about that. So those are just kind of the high points. Any of any of these things could have further elaboration. I was in a hurry and I didn't really see a need if we don't if we don't you know, if we want it to be succinct, which a lot of the times we, we talk about how we want it succinct. So this could be expanded or not, depending on how people feel. Um, how it relates to other chapters, I just quickly chose economic development, transportation and utilities, and then, and then I tried to come up with something with community services and natural resources, but I'll be the first to admit that this paragraph's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> because it's about linking the built environment with the natural environment. And it took a little bit of uh, speculation on my part to say, well, some of our art will probably be a blending of the natural environment with the built environment. Um, I mean, we're not specifically calling for that, but it seems like the kind of thing we do. Um, but so those are, the, those are the connections that I pointed out. I think we talked about some of these. Again, this stuff could be fleshed out a bit more. Um, I thought about a way of connecting the parts of this plan um, that talk about using using uh, storefronts for art displays. Like that could be something that um, could be talked about here related to economic development. I didn't include that, but I did include you know how it touches on tourism. Um, it brings people like there's the events that bring people in, and then there's the art making us look prettier. So those are kind of two distinct things, both related to economic development. Uh, and that's that's about it. And then past efforts was, I actually couldn't quickly find when the Public Arts Commission was created. I thought it was last year maybe, but it's, some of the dates on the website they use went back to 2018. 
think it might be 2020 then or 2019 when it was formed. So we'll we'll have, we'll have to track that down to make sure we um, we leave the the right dates there. Uh, but then this this is just the most recent stuff. Um, again, it could be fleshed out. And that's my quick intro to this to what we have here. Uh, anybody have any reactions? I think it's mostly how I usually do it. I just start putting things down and then start shuffling them around because that's what will probably end up happening because the, the next section that happens after the one you have there talks about what are aspirations and goals and what are our strategies. So we kind of convert what's in the implementation strategy into a couple of paragraphs that kind of go through and say, so these are our goals and this is what we're going to do about accomplishing our goals. Um, and I think up top, that's where some of the introduction may get pulled down. And I think the only difference on top that I might look at is usually the two things we're trying to talk about in the introduction. One is why is why is this important? So why is arts and culture important? And I think you've talked about that and you've got that. And then there's a little bit of, you know, what's, you know, why is this or what's unique about Montpelier or why is this important to Montpelier? And I think so there's a little piece in there. I think that we kind of have to touch on maybe a little bit of, I think the fact that we've, we've got a lot of these uh, cultural pieces that are out there, um, you know, whether it's the Lost Nation Theater and the studios, and there are a lot of things that are good about Montpelier and the arts, but there's also kind of, you know, this odd uh, history in Montpelier of not having any public art, um, you know, up until the public art master plan, it was a remarkably, you know, empty city, and I don't know how we're, how we'll say that in a positive way, but, you know, um, it was certainly from a professional planner standpoint, you know, we, we go through and say that, you know, the city, Montpelier missed the city beautiful movement, um, you know, that other communities had, um, which you drive through, you go through any downtown from, you know, 1880, 1890, up through 1910, 1920 was the city beautiful movement. It was a big period of time where there was a lot of investment throughout the country and beautifying and celebrating our uh, our communities. So that's when the statues of George Washington were built. And, um, you know, there are uh, a lot of these types of uh, art and monuments and statues were all erected in, in that window. And for some reason, Montpelier didn't get any. We have no grand fountains, um, no great statues. You know, you go just go down the road to Barry City and you've got um, the Burns Memorial, we've got the, the Youth Triumphant, we've got the um, statue, the Italian um, memorial there for the, the Italian art car, uh, the Carver's Memorial there. Um, there. There are statues all over the place, but yet Montpelier doesn't have a single statue. Even though it's the state capital, so it's kind of a unique so that's one of the things we're trying to change is is to try to bring more art to montpelier that for some reason we haven't had um and i think that i think the art commission is doing a fantastic job um for having a limited budget they have really managed to get a lot of projects rolled out um so certainly um i've been impressed with the amount of impact they've had so yeah, and that's I, I did I made sure to, to point out here, and this kind of goes actually what we were talking about earlier about people weaponizing things. Um, just to just to make sure that it's clearly written in the plan. Um, try to talk about how you know our plan here works with the public art master plan, and um, to be clear that we want this to be in conjunction with that plan and to supplement that plan and the work of the public art commission wouldn't want anyone to use anything we use against their efforts or vice versa. Um, so that is, I, did be, I was sure to include that at least in that summary of past efforts. But this could maybe be called out because you were talking about moving stuff around. Maybe it could be called out to the intro, in fact, to, to put a higher uh, emphasis on our intention of how this could be, how this should be taken or used. Certainly not to limit 
um, these efforts. Anybody else have any other reactions? Um, Mike and well, okay, I'll stop and ask that question first. Anybody have any other reactions? I, I thought uh, it seemed Mike. good. Oh. oh, what's that? I just say, I thought it seemed good. That's all. Thank you. Uh, so, so Mike, what do you want to do for like next steps? Do you want to take this and expand on it? Or would you like me to try to expand more? What works for you? Um, I would say probably over the next two weeks, I probably won't be jumping too much into this one. Um, I'm going to probably be focusing on the implementation strategy, but, um, uh, for for community services, because I really want to try to make sure I'm getting these last pieces ready. So when SE group starts moving forward, we've got the pieces. So either I've got to write the utilities and facilities chapter, or I've got to do the implementation strategy, but I've got to get those two pieces rolling. But we're in pretty good shape between, and I'm, and I'm also obviously helping uh, Jake with the public safety stuff, because he's getting kicked off. So um, I don't, I, I won't promise to be getting too much into this, but the more ideas that get put down, the, you know, even if it doesn't have a something, even if it's just a, you know, a chunk that's in there, then that really gets us um, going in the right direction. Cause then I, then I've got things I can start moving around. If, if you're ready to just go and say, here you go, Mike, start shuffling it around and make a chapter out of this, the more pieces or whatever that we have, then the easier it'll be for me to, to start to, to tell the story. And then again, it's back to you. You guys usually take these things and kind of beat them up for a bit. Um, and that's fine. So that way we're ready to go. Okay. Well, I threw in just a couple little notes there at the bottom for things that we just talked about. Um, we can do that more. Uh, yeah, I certainly wouldn't expect a, a two-week turnaround. I think our next meeting is going to be pretty full because SE Group will be presenting. So, um, yeah. yeah, no expectation that this chapter needs to be completely done. Um, and we also have another meeting and the other another uh, presentation, right, for in the other October meeting. The Historic Preservation Commission will be showing up. Yeah. So, so yeah, there's time to work. Um, if I, if I can think of anything more to, to add, I can go back and try to try to help give you some of those like nuggets to work off of like you were saying. Yeah, I, I haven't read the arts plan, not certainly not as well as you have. So um, I'll kind of count on you to make sure you pull some of the pieces out that are the most important and I can try to get in and work with them. Yeah, I think I think I've I've haven't pulled out all of the extra elaboration and detail, but definitely the main the key takeaways um, are are in this. Um, okay. Well, does anybody have anything else for tonight before we sign off? Okay. No reason to adjourn because this was never official. Uh, but <laughs> uh, if nobody has anything else, we can we can sign off. <laughs>